Hello, and welcome to Save Your Sanity podcast. I'm glad you're here. I hope that you have heard this program before and you're returning. And if you haven't heard it before and you just found us, you're so welcome. And I'm glad you did find it. Save Your Sanity podcast happens twice a week. And you're just so welcome to subscribe and be part of this community. If you find value in it and you'd like to support it, please go to patreon.com slash save your sanity and you can pledge a dollar, five dollars, a few dollars a month and that will help us continue to do this on a regular basis. So I hope that's helpful to you. And you know what's really important to talk about today? We've been doing this series, I've been doing these series of Housebound with a Hijackle and why I'm doing this series is when we are in quarantine, when we're in shutdown or lockdown or self-isolation or whatever you're calling it, this is the time when difficult people, toxic people, are wanting to rage at the world even more than usual because they are not the ones in control of what's happening. And so when they don't feel in control, they try to control you more. And we're hearing a lot on Facebook and various mediums about the increase in domestic violence. And it is increasing incrementally. And sadly, you know, there was a piece in The Guardian from the UK the other day, and it said they had done their research, and it said, <clears throat> we can say that the number of women killed by men, and I don't know about the number of men killed by women, but this article says we can say that the number of women killed by men over the first three weeks since lockdown is the highest it's been for at least 11 years and is double that of an average 21 days over the last 10 years. The research shows at least seven people have allegedly been killed by partners or former partners during the period while three people were killed by their father. So domestic violence is not only partner violence, but it can be parent violence. It can be sibling violence. It can be coworker violence. So I want to talk today about the violence nobody sees, the emotional domestic violence. And we need to call it that because that is what it is. It's emotional domestic violence. It leaves deep, deep scars but you can't see the wounds, you don't see the bleeding, you don't see the bruises and cuts, you don't see the casts, you don't get the x-rays, none of that, but it is sometimes much worse. I've had many clients say to me that the emotional damage that has been done to me is greater than the times I went to the hospital. And you know, going to the hospital many times will help heal a physical abuse situation, but healing an emotional abuse situation takes so long. So it's kind of like that urban myth, you know, about how to cook frogs or lobsters or whatever one you read is that you put them in cold water and then you slowly turn up the heat and they don't notice. Well, that's kind of the way it is with a hijackle, a relentlessly difficult, toxic person. Everything seems fine in the beginning. They're charming. They're wonderful. They care about you. They go out of their way for you. They plan things. They seem to know you like no one else ever has. And so you're charmed and you're sure that you have found your soulmate. And that's the love bombing phase. That's the number one way that we're going to talk about to begin this program. But when you are in that phase, nobody can tell you anything. Have you noticed that? How many clients, and I have clients all over the world, and you know, if that interests you, you can always find me, but <clears throat> how many clients have said to me that my friends didn't like him, my mother didn't like him, nobody liked him or her, they told me not to do it, they told me stories about them, and I had this feeling like, oh, it won't happen to me, this person really loves me, and you felt special because they had made you feel special. And that's only natural. Of course, we all like to feel special. And so we go down the path. No, It's not that we're 
incapable of understanding. We're just so much in a hormone haze because we have all of this wonderful excitement, this higher level of serotonin and well-being and being loved and dopamine. We're washed in it. And then slowly, usually, it begins to erode. Sometimes slowly over a few days, a few weeks, a few months, a few years, but it does. So I wanted to talk to you today directly about 16 forms of emotional domestic violence. So you can just kind of wake up to it again. Ask yourself, is this really what I'm experiencing now? Or somebody I love, are they experiencing it? Are they coming to me and telling me it's happening and I am making excuses for them or telling them it's not so bad because maybe I don't believe it or I don't know what to do about it. So hopefully this will help us all remember that when people are being emotionally abused, this is emotional domestic violence and we need to hear them. We need to believe them. We need to become interested and see what we can do to help. So I'm going to talk about these 16 things. And you know, if at any time you want my help, you can always find more help, more information about my blogs, my books, my courses, Saturday support sessions, my membership site, everything at forrelationshiphelp.com. So that is always there for you. So let's talk about these 16 things because they are so important. You know, as I said, you get you get used to being treated poorly over time. You know, that water heats up and, you know, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And then pretty soon, it's like walking on hot coals all the time. And it's very uncomfortable. And what are hijackles good for? Well, they make you second guess yourself. If you are a good person, you're thinking, oh, well, maybe that's not what they meant. Oh, they didn't intend that. They really love me, but they're having a bad day. They make you second guess that gut feeling that you had that, hey, this is no way to treat me. And yet you don't honor yourself. You want to give them the benefit of the doubt. So they cause you to second guess yourself. And then they cause you to question your sanity. Did that really happen? Am I making a mountain out of a molehill? What's really going on here? These are things that are common. So if you are nodding your head right now and recognizing that, yes, I do second guess myself and question my sanity, know that that's common to this experience, common to these 16 forms of emotional domestic violence. And yes, emotional abuse is domestic violence. It happens in the home and it violates you. And just because you don't go to the hospital for it, there are no cuts and bruises, bandages and casts to show for it. It is equally as dangerous, if not more dangerous, because the effects are much longer lasting. So let's look at these 16 forms of invisible emotional domestic violence. And I'm going to go through them fairly quickly because I want to bring them all to you today. However, I do talk about many of them in other podcasts and videos on my YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is for relationship help. So go there. If you're looking for something, put in a keyword, find it, subscribe while you're there because then you'll always know when I put up another video. So let's look at these. Okay, I mentioned the first one before, that in, in fact, this love bombing thing that goes on, yes, that's how they get you in the first place. They love bomb you into thinking that they are your soulmate. And it isn't very long before you realize that you may not even want them as a roommate. That it is not a happy circumstance. But they love bomb you into that gotcha. You know, in my book, um, Escaping the Hijackal Trap, there's a whole chapter called The Gotcha Factor. You know, they're in a hurry. They can't keep up their charade very long. They can't keep up their facade of being this wonderful person who really cares about you, loves you deeply, and wants to please you, they can't. So they want you to move in with them or marry them or have children with them or do something really quickly. And that is a big sign. If somebody's in a rush, 
put on the brake pedal, that's when the love bombing will turn into what it really is. And you will get to see it if you don't buy the love bombing quickly. Very, very important. So what's another kind? Another form of emotional abuse is blaming. You know a hijackal is never going to take responsibility for what they do. They're not going to be accountable for what they said yesterday. They're not even going to be accountable for what they said two minutes ago. They change their mind on a dime and then tell you you don't listen very well. But they blame you for everything because you were close. You know, I've said so many times that hijackals paint a public picture of perfection, but at home they create a private place of pain. And so that's what they do. They blame you for everything. Something that couldn't even remotely be your fault will become your fault because they will not take responsibility for it. And that is emotional abuse. It is inaccurate. It is not truthful. It didn't happen. Or it didn't happen in the way that they want you to believe it happened. And that changes everything. So, another way. Shaming. If they can make you feel small, they feel that that makes them a bigger person. They can take up more space. So if they shame you to reduce you, to shrink you down in size, then they honestly believe that that makes them bigger. It doesn't. It actually makes them smaller. But that's only for people who can see the truth. In their mind, they have the right to keep you, cut you down to size, right? That's a phrase they like. And so they will shame you. They will tell you that everything about you is wrong. You know, blaming is when you do something wrong, but shaming is when someone tells you that you're, you don't have the right to exist. You know, blaming says you made a mistake and shaming says you are a mistake. And they'll say things like that outrightly. I know that you know that. You may have heard that, and that's sad, really sad. They will degrade you. That means that they have to find ways to make you less. It's related to shaming, but it is a little bit different in that they're telling you that you are worthless, that Whatever it is that you are doing, you're not doing it well enough. You never did it well enough. In fact, you're incapable of doing it well enough. And they will just chip away at you, wear you down, tear you down, put you down, and degrade you. And that is really, really sad. But that is what happens. And because of that second guessing and questioning your sanity, you think, oh, maybe they're right. Maybe they see me better. And they're happy to tell you that they know you better than you know yourself, aren't they? So maybe you get into the habit of thinking, oh, maybe they're right. Maybe they're right. And because they isolate and marginalize you away from other people, particularly your family and friends, then your family and friends see less and less of what's actually happening, and you start questioning yourself. And so there is degrading that goes on. And then following that, it is discounting. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you want. I don't care what you prefer. Your opinion doesn't matter to me. Now, if at that moment you start to talk about leaving them, what do they do? They go back to number one, love bombing. Or they go to the silent treatment. They'll walk out and discard you. Now, I didn't put discarding on this list because that is something that they do in order to have power over you. But it is not really under the auspices of emotional domestic violence. I'm talking about the things that they do to hurt you. Discarding may hurt you, but at least they leave, which is great. <laughs> in the end, it is a good thing uh, because they have been hurting you. But they will discount you. They will just not care what you think, feel, need, want, prefer, Nothing. They just won't do. It, it won't do. It, you almost don't exist except to be the person that they can have power over, which is what they want. And so therefore, that moves on to manipulating. They will manipulate the truth. They have a very loose relationship with the truth. Have you noticed that? 
very loose relationship. They make up facts. They make up the way it was. They just put their own spin on everything to make themselves look better, feel better, and be right. And so they manipulate the reality. They manipulate you. They try to get you to do things that you don't want to do that they want you to do. They make promises that they never intend to keep. They lie about things. They lie about other humans. There is so much in this manipulation. Now, remember, in today's episode, what I'm trying to do is give you an overview of these things. And we'll talk about each one of them at different times during the podcast episodes. But I want you to think about all of them today because once you realize all of this stuff is happening, Maybe it's all happening to you right now or has happened to you in the last few months or years. And I want you to be able to add it up and say, wow, this is a lot. In fact, it's too much. It's not okay with me. And the manipulation is atrocious and astonishing, right? It is. And it sometimes seems endless. Yeah, you get a little respite every now and again when things are going well for them and they're afraid of losing you. Or maybe they're not particularly tense at the moment and all is right in their world. And so they treat you nicely for a moment. And then that hooks you on hope that that's the real person, the person that you fell in love with, that person who love bomb you really is the real person. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Remember my formula, ABB, always believe behavior. Don't get into some pie in the sky idea that just because every now and again they seem to love you that that is what the relationship is about. Sadly, it isn't. And so what else do they do? You're familiar with this term. I've done episodes on it, on gaslighting. That's when they try to define your reality. That's when they try to tell you what you think, what you feel, what you need, what you want, what you believe, what you remember. You know, all of that, they try to tell you that their version of you is the one that is true and you're wrong about who you are, what you think, what you need. (laughs) That's crazy making, absolutely crazy making. And at that moment, it does cause you to question your sanity. Certainly it does. And gaslighting is so destructive. You know, that's again where they'll tell you, I know you better than you know yourself. You just forget you, don't, you know how you are always forgetting. You don't get the details right. That's gaslighting. And they do that. And, you know, it sounds sort of reasonable because hijackles are the masters of the plausible lie. That goes back to their manipulating as well. And it certainly falls into the gaslighting. The plausible lie, it could make sense. It It kind of figures in the moment. Now, maybe an hour from now, you go back and say, what? What what happened? What were they saying? And what was I thinking? But in the moment, the plausible lie sometimes wins. And gaslighting is a form of the plausible law. Lie, rather. (laughs) And it becomes law if they said it, right? (laughs) So I guess that was a slip of the tongue that was actually accurate. Now, here's another one. They are projecting. What that means is what they're afraid they did or they feel or they have done or is true about them, they project it onto you and say it's true about you, but not about them. Now, this is a very important concept to realize is emotional domestic abuse because whatever they're thinking, if you can stand back, if you can get some perspective on the relationship for a little bit, you will begin to realize that, whoa, they told me that I was like that, but hey, that's how they are. And you need to have that stepping back moment because they count on you being confused in the moment and believing what they're saying. And you step back and say, hey, no, that's not true. And you can see these things, you know, that they are projecting on you What they're afraid is true of themselves. And when you can step back and maybe get a little help, I often help my clients see this, that they were telling you who they are by what they were projecting on you. They were telling you what they were thinking or what they were afraid of was true about them by telling you it's true of you. 
So when you start to understand the projecting behaviors that they're doing, it gives you a moment to be able to step back and go, not my stuff. You know, in last week's solo cast, every week on Save Your Sanity, I do one interview and one like today where it's just me talking to you. I talked about very important life-saving ways that were antidotes to the toxicity of being housebound with a hijackal. And that exercise that I taught you in there, the mine and theirs exercise, becomes very important in this projecting business. This is really true about me? No, here's what's true about me. What's true about them is that, and you learn to separate. So go back and listen to that episode. And they love, love, love to deflect. They don't want anything to land on them. They'll, ch they'll move around, they'll, they'll make a circular conversation. Isn't that the most annoying thing ever? They make this circular conversation. It never resolves. It never resolves. It just keeps moving around and around. And they deflect from the conversation topic. They deflect from any shame or blame on them. They deflect by wanting to talk about something different or focusing on the wrong part of the message, not what you wanted to talk about at all. So they deflect, deflect, deflect. Like, don't get anything don't let anything land on me. So they are deflecting. And when that is going on, it is crazy making for you in the moment because you want to say, no, I wanted to talk about this, but now there are three topics over. And maybe they use word salad. You know that one where they deflect by kind of talking in phrases that don't make sense and don't connect to each other, but kind of you don't want to interrupt but they're using words incorrectly and linking them together just taking up airspace that happens a lot when they're deflecting they they know they don't have anything valid to say but they're sure not going to let you talk that's a big deal and then you move on to one i've spent a lot of time on all or nothing thinking it's a form of emotional domestic violence because they tell you you always do it this way or you never do it this way. One moment they love you more than anything, the next moment you're the scum of the earth. There are no gray areas with hijackals. It's black or white. It is not gray. There are no shades. And they flip-flop, oh, you know, like a fish out of water anything to protect themselves. So they're going back and forth with this all or nothing thinking. I'm actually writing an ebook about it because it affects you so much. And if you are raised by a hijackal, it's something you have to look for within yourself too, because you may have that kind of thinking about yourself. And uh, you really need help if that's the case to see it, because it's become just part of you and you don't see it anymore. And that's unfortunate. And we hope that we can reverse that so that you clearly see your own all or nothing thinking because you've been subjected to it for so long. If you were subjected to it by a parent, you won't really notice it as much when you're subjected to it by a partner. And that is unfortunate, but can be changed. So it's very important to see that all or nothing thinking. And then we move on to moving the markers. Yeah, so frustrating. They tell you that it will be like this if only, you know, you do this or this arrives or that happens or the sun shines or, you know, the IRS is out of business. But as soon as whatever it was they said would be the thing that would cause them to do things or do things differently, they make another marker. They move it to say, oh, no, you know, you... I never said that, or it is not enough, or I've changed my mind. And so you never get there. They move the markers. And that is terribly distressing, isn't it? Because you thought you had an agreement. You know, in my video course, Seeing the Cycles, you think you have an agreement. You honestly think you have an agreement. But they didn't make an agreement. They put out an idea, and they gave you a plausible lie. And they made you feel as though they meant what they said, but they didn't nail that down in their own minds. They were just leading you on, leading you astray. 
or maybe promising you something that they never planned to give you, but it got you off their back for a few minutes and they're very happy about that. So they keep moving the markers and that is very distressing because you're never good enough. You never get there. You never arrive. What you wanted never happens. And that's a way that they abuse you. Here's a big one. They love to evade, right? They really do not want to talk about what you want to talk about at any time. So if they use the blaming and shaming and controlling and projecting and all the things I've talked about so far, and then we get down to the evading, they are going to change the subject. They are going to say, I don't want to talk about this at this time. I promise I'll talk about it later, you know, again, moving the markers. They, um, they never say it's a good time. They may, if they want to evade, they will blame you for something and then give you the silent treatment. You know, I've said it before. I had one client who asked me one day, how long does the silent treatment usually last? And I said to him, how long does it last with your wife? And he said, six weeks. Whew, that's a lot of time. Now, if you've been with a hijackle for very long, sometimes I'll get questions in my membership site, you know, Dr. Shaler's um, support circles. And you can go there when you go to forrelationshiphelp.com. You'll see circles in the navigation. And they'll ask questions about this, this very thing, about <clears throat> this whole evasive thing. And they will do it endlessly. They will move on and on and evade and evade and evade and the question comes you know will this person ever do this well the answer is of course not they won't ever do that and then on the silent treatment side people ask me well what should i do about this well they'll tell me their story that they've been with the hijack over a long long time and they may have shared some instances and then they get to the silent treatment and if i know the person and i know what they've been going through and they say, well, I hate the silent treatment. Well, if you're with a hijackal, maybe it's a good idea to learn to love the silent treatment. Don't see it as abuse. See it as incredible relief. You're not hearing from them. Yes, you have to learn to deal with all these things. You have to learn to make good decisions about how to respond to them. And sometimes you have to come to a lot of clarity to know whether or not you want to stay with them. But if they give you the silent treatment and you don't respond by trying to get them to talk because you're enjoying the silence, they'll soon start talking because they don't want you to be happy about that. They think they're punishing you. So that's one of the ways that they in practice this one form of emotional domestic violence is this withdrawing, withholding themselves from you, removing themselves emotionally from the relationship and communication. So they evade. Then there's this big one, threatening. Now, they may or may not ever do what they threaten, but they wield a big stick, don't they? They're always threatening, threatening to tell your mother, threatening to tell your boss, threatening to take away money, threatening to hit you, threatening to leave you, threatening something. All because these are threats are very clumsy communication tools to have control. And they don't know differently and they don't know better, so they threaten. And if you've been threatened when you were a child, then that ties into that part of you that gets scared. And threatening may work. But it is a form of emotional domestic violence that we need to recognize. You don't go around threatening people. Bullies do that. I will show you that I can make you do whatever I want you to do and I'm bigger than you and stronger than you and I will crush you like a gnat. That's what bullies do. And hijackals use bullying tactics like threatening. And here's one that I really want you to notice. They stalk you and surveil you. I call it surveillance. This is when they blow your phone up over and over and over. You know, I work by video conferencing, so I have clients all over the world. I was working with a client the other day, and she had her phone on the table near where we were talking by video, and it kept buzzing and buzzing and buzzing and buzzing. 
and it was her partner who was angry. Now, in that one hour, I'm sure that that phone buzzed at least seven times. And then twice her children came in because he had called them and told them to tell their mother that he was trying to call them. That's surveillance. I need to know where you are. I'm afraid where you are. I need to know exactly where you are. And I'm going to make up something about where you are so I can make you wrong. And that is stalking and surveillance. If you ever think that this person has put something on your phone or your car, and if you haven't thought about it until this moment, you find out if they have put GPS on your phone or your car so they know where you are. That is inappropriate. They don't need to know where you are. Two consenting adults may decide to do that for safety reasons, but a hijacker will do that without telling you or demand to do that so they'll believe you when you say where you go. And that is inappropriate. That is violent. That is invasive. And that is a way to keep you small. And that is definitely not okay. Now, I told you there were 16. There are two more. And this one, they treat you with that condescending, patronizing, oh, imagine, I am big enough to put up with your foolishness. I will listen to you, but, you know, you don't have a thing worthwhile to say. There you go again. That's just silly. It's stupid. It's not worthwhile. And they will speak to you as an, all right, dear, whatever you say. Yes, I know. You with the little pea brain came up with that all by yourself. That's the way they talk to you. And it's condescending and patronizing, and it's awful. And it is not the way two emotionally mature adults behave with one another in a supposedly loving relationship. Now, hijackals are not emotionally mature. We know that. So it's not going to happen differently with a hijackal. So maybe you want to be with somebody who is more emotionally mature. But first of all, you're going to have to make decisions about the relationship in which you find yourself. And if you're out of that relationship, get some help to heal all these things. Because I just bet you've been listening and going, yeah, that happened. Oh, that happened. Oh, I remember that happened. And those things get kind of stored like tentacles around your heart. And we need to work with them. We need to find them. We need to change them. We need to empower you to not have that. So all of these 15 things I give you add up to the 16th one, which is every possible way to Sunday, they want to control you. Control, control, control. That's what's important. That's what's top of mind. Dominate, control. Do whatever you have to do in order to be the one in charge, the, the king of the hill, the queen of the valley, whatever it is. They have to be the one that makes the decisions and says what is right, wrong, and okay. Control is a big thing, and it's control because they are so afraid that they don't have that kind of power. Now, don't have a compassionate minute there for any more than a second to say that's too bad that somehow they learned that when they were young, but you didn't teach them that, and you can't change that. So very important to note. So I hope that these 16 things have rung some bells for you. I'm sorry that you have been in situations where those bells have been rung previously, but it is impactful for you to realize, wow, that's a lot of stuff. That is a lot of things that are inappropriate, inequitable, and they shouldn't be going on in an anywhere near healthy relationship. Now, I've mentioned before to you, that you can go to beaclient.com if you'd like to have my one hour full session for only $97 to see what kinds of things we could accomplish in your relationship. And I mentioned the Patreon community. So if you'd like to support this podcast, please go to patreon.com slash save your sanity. I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler. You can always find me at forrelationshiphelp.com. And every week I remind you, and I'm going to remind you every week from here on in, treat yourself very well because you are precious and you matter. Talk soon.